In the last tutorial I showed you how to use UI toolkit and this time I will cover how to create button animations using pseudo classes, how to create fading, moving, scaling and other animations using different style classes. And lastly how to animate using Dootween through code. Let's begin with animating the buttons using pseudo classes that Unity provides for us. Those pseudo classes define states and when one of the elements enters the state it is going to change its style. So we will go to the UI builder and I will copy the menu button style that we have created. I will rename it and add the pseudo class to it. We will be using the hover pseudo class and now we can select the selector and change some stuff that we want to happen when we hover over the button. So I will go to the transform tab and I will increase the scale. You can also change the color and so on. I will create another menu button selector using the active pseudo class. This one is going to trigger when we actually click the button, so I will just change the color. And when I hover over the play button, you can see that it is getting bigger, and when I click it, it also changes its color. But it doesn't work with the other buttons, which is because we have already set some inline styles in the UI builder, so I will just select the settings button, and we can see it down in the transitions, we have some transition that we don't need, so I will just click the minus, go to the quit button and do the same. And now we can see that it works with all buttons. And to make the movement a bit smoother, we'll add some transitions. Select the menu button hover selector and we can go down to the transition animations, give it some duration and now it is going to automatically transition between the menu button hover state and the menu button state. We can also select which properties we want to be affected by this transition, but we want to keep all of them and you can also select different easing type if you want. And you can do the same for the menu button active selector where I will make the duration really quick, because when we click it, we don't want it to take too long. And now you can see the animations are looking a lot better. Now let's make animation for the settings, so it is going to slide from top and it is going to fade in. We'll need to create two new selectors for the settings, one for when we can see it and second one for when it is out of the screen. So I will select the settings parent and create new selector from it using the extract inline styles to new class button. Now I will go to the transform tab and I will just move the settings so that we can't see it. And I will also go to the display tab and I will turn the opacity to zero. And create new selector from it. And now when you try to remove the settings up selector, which is the style when we can't see the settings, you should see that it goes back down. And when we add it back in, it should go up. Now we'll just add some transition for it. So I will select the settings parent, go down to the transitions. And again, you can give it some easing and some duration. And now, when you remove the settings up selector, you can see that it is slowly fading and it is moving down. And when we edit, it should go back up, so that looks pretty nice. Now we'll just need to do all of that through code. We can delete these lines when we are setting the display style, because we won't need that. And what we'll do instead, is that we'll add the style class to the list. So on the start, I will just make sure that we can't see the settings. So I will do settings parent dot add class to list. And to the parentheses, we need to type the name of the class, which in my case is settings up. And you should type it without the dot, just like this. So on start, we won't be able to see it. When we click the button to close the settings, we also want to add the class to the list. And when we click the settings button, we want to remove it. So this way we are just changing the styles of the settings and it is automatically going to transition between them. So we can try clicking the settings button and we can see the settings comes from top and it is slowly fading out. And when we close it, yep, the same animation plays. So we can see that it is really easy to animate these buttons and other elements in your UI. But what if you don't want to be creating hundreds of styles for your UI? Well, the other way to do it is through code and we will be using the dootween package. And that just allows you to easily interpolate between values using different easing types. You can download the Dootween on the Asset Store and once you have it downloaded, you will also need to go to Tools, the Migant and go to the Utility Panel where you will need to set it up. After that, we can open our script, add using dg.tweening and we can use all of the tweening functionality. I will use it to animate the underline in the settings menu, so I am just going to quickly add it. So we have just this underline that will be moving from left to right. Back in the script, I will make a variable for it, so it will be visual element. So we have a reference for it, and I will go to the on settings button click function, so when we open the settings, we will start moving it. 
First, I will just define float variables for the starting and the ending point of the animation. So we have the starting position, so I'm just taking the local bounds of the settings underline and accessing the width, which I'm multiplying by 0.1. So this is just the starting position on the left, and then we also have the ending position. I'm also defining the current position. And to make it move, we'll be using the .vin.to function. This is taking quite a few parameters, but before we create it, I will just create variable for the tween so that we can later stop it. You can see that to the function we need to provide a getter, setter, end value and the duration. First the getter will be the start position. So we are using the lambda for that. Next into the setter we will just define that we want to set the position to the x which is the actual value that the twin returns us. And then we can just provide it the end position and the duration. So now we have created the twin, but to actually use it we need to be setting the position of the underline element. To do that, we'll use the onUpdate function. So until the twin is running, we can actually do something on update. So we'll just change the position of the element. So we'll just set the position to new vector 3, the position is on the x, and on y we can have just 0 because this is local position. We can try going to the settings, and we can see that the animation plays just once, so we'll need to add some looping to it. So I'm just chaining these functions, and using the set loops we can set as many loops as we want, minus one means infinite loops, and we can select the loop type, which in my case I selected the yo-yo, so it'll go to right, back to left, to right, left, and so on. And if you want, you can also use the set ease so that you can specify which ease you want to use. And to make sure that it will no longer exists when we close the settings, I will go to the on close settings button clicked and just kill the tween, just like that. So we can try opening the settings, yep, we can see the underline is constantly moving from left to right. And like this you could animate as many visual elements as you want. You can see that animating elements in your UX is really simple, you can either do it through creating many styles or just code it using do tween. I hope that this video was useful, if you have any questions or suggestions, let me know down in the comments, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.